This one uh, is always last, my one. <laughs> this, for those of us that have either come to enjoy what we do over this season or have come to hate us and for some reason you still watch <laughs> these because you hate us, either way, this is your moment. Uh, we're going to look your back at some shine. of our... Moment to shine. We're going to look back at some of our takes from earlier in the season and the off season and see where were we right? Where were we wrong? Are we stupid? Are we smart? Can we see the future? Who knows? Uh, we're just going to keep it simple. B's going to give his positive. I'm going to give my negative. We'll keep going through that and flip it back and forth. So B, I'll let you go first. What was your first potential? What was your uh, take that we hit on this year? Yeah. So, you know, as, the local Bears fan here. I did have a Bears take. Um, before the season started, I said, you know, worst case scenario, they went seven games this year. Best case, they went like 10. And people are like, oh, no, they're not going to be anything close to that. They'd be lucky to win four or five. You know, give me the good old shit on Twitter or whatnot. Um, and sure enough, you know, sure enough, they end up winning their seventh game last weekend. So that was a hit. Um, before the season started, or I guess right when the season started, they looked like, the ceiling for this team was four wins. It started off 0-4. Uh, but in the last 12, it went 7-5. and And to make the point a little bit sweeter, um, I know it's coulda, woulda, shoulda, but they are the second team ever to throw, to blow three double-digit leads in the, in the fourth quarter. So they could be at 10, 10 wins right now, which is crazy to think about this team potentially being in a in the playoff spot right now. Um, so I think that was a good-ass hit. Yeah, especially if they had added Montez Sweat earlier, maybe those wouldn't have been blowout losses. Maybe uh, or you know would have given up double digit leads. Um, I did obviously have a four ers take. I think I said they were going to go thirteen to four, worst case ten and seven, but that's not. I'm not going to consider that a, a great. A, that's pretty obvious. You know, they, they were a great. Day, Let's go. Come on. Come they, on. <laughs> they were a good team in the off season. Anyone, anyone with two eyes can call it that. <laughs> but what you know what they. Uh, but they would have probably seen that we didn't see so well. Uh, we said that Jalen Carter was going to be a bust. Mm. Uh, obviously, based on how this first season has gone, and it's just one year, uh, that has not happened. Uh, the reason we said Jalen Carter was going to be a bust is we had character concerns. There was, uh, at the time going on, a lot of legal trauma problems with him, about the drunk driving, the car accident, stuff like that. Uh, we were concerned that that might carry over to the NFL. Once guys get a lot more money and more freedom, there's less school going on. Thankfully, thankfully that has not happened for him in his first season. We do hope that does continue. And you know what? If there's a take I'm going to be wrong on, I'm glad it's this one. I'm glad this guy's not a bust. I'm glad he's living his best life, being a star defensive tackle for the Philadelphia Eagles. Same here. Same here. I'm glad he's doing well. And he, is he over? Is he playing over Jordan Davis now? I think he, so. There's been a lot of complaints. Of, I think he is because there's been a lot of complaints about Jordan Davis's uh, effort level. I guess some people have mentioned he's come in overweight. He hasn't been playing up to the expectation that's kind of been set. So I think he is starting over Jordan Davis right now. Okay. Okay, Jalen. Let's get it then. Mm -hmm. And he's the favorite to win defensive player of the year right now, I believe. Interesting. Okay. Cool. So um, keeping the Bears theme the same here, we did say that. DJ Moore would be top 10 in receiving yards, and he is, or I guess he, sh he should be. Um, he's ranked seventh right now, and unless some um, bizarre stuff happens this upcoming weekend where other guys just get like 200 yards receiving and then bump him out of the top 10, I think it's safe to say he will be in the top 10. Um, this add another factor to that, I guess, argument too, or that or that take. We also said like Fields about to throw like 4,000 yards for him, to, for him to get there in like – He's obviously nowhere close. He missed four and a half games. I don't know how much passing yards Bajan has in the four games that he, he played. But as as a team, I don't think we're at 4,000 passing yards. So that just means like they're feeding him the ball, which is awesome to see. He, he's a great athlete. Um, and, you know, he's also a, a snub for the Pro Bowl, too. I had to throw that out there. Um, but, yeah, we were, we were right about DJ Moore. Yeah, imagine now adding another weapon like Marvin Harrison Jr. to that room and seeing what happens. Oh, or man, Malik Napers or Romeo Brock Bowers. Dunze, Brock Bowers. Uh, another potential miss for us. Not potential miss. Another miss for us. We missed We missed really badly on this one. <laughs> um, we said the Ravens were going to miss the playoffs. We figured wah, wah, wah. 
<laughs> so the reasoning behind uh, the the prediction at that time was that uh, the Browns had Deshaun Watson, who was in the second year in the system. They had adds Darius Smith. They had made a lot of great pieces to make them look like they were going to be contention. Uh, the Bengals still had Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase and T. Higgins, and they looked spectacular, obviously, in the season prior. So we expected them to do well again. Uh, the Steelers were our hot up-and-coming team. Um with the the additions they had made in the draft and a couple of free agent signings. I, I believe one of them was like right guard who they took uh, some, I can't remember the guy's name right now, uh, but and they Alex, were sleeper. Alex Highsmith too. Alex Highsmith who they resigned. They, they looked like they had a vaunted defense, which they do. Um, so it looked like they were good to make the playoffs. Um, so we just figured there wasn't enough spaces potentially for everyone. So ha- someone had to be left out. The Ravens had made the least uh, noise. notable additions mm-hmm. so that kind of, kind of to us made logical sense of if someone's going to miss the playoffs it might be the ravens now granted we didn't predict that they were going to have a terrible season we just thought they'd probably slightly miss the playoffs obviously that was wrong they are the number one seed in the afc they have been in juggernaut for the majority of the year they've blown out a lot of good playoff teams so good for the ravens good on them uh bad for us and that take you know, we might have missed the Ravens doing well as a team, but we did hit on a player who they drafted this this season. Um, we said Zay Flowers will be an impact player for the Ravens, um, and we said we had a is this a player going to bust? Is he not segment during you know April time, whatever the draft was? And we said he was not going to be a, a bust. He's going to be really, really good for them, mostly because he's stepping into that Hollywood Brown role, and sure enough. He is doing pretty pretty well. Um, he's leading the Ravens in every like receiving metric right now. Um, I and then my hunch tells me they're going to lean on him a lot in the the, the playoffs here. It's going to op- open up the field, right? Get the passing game going, so the run game can also get get going too. Especially now they have Dalvin Cook. Um, so even though we missed on the Ravens team doing well, we were right about one of their young stars. Perfect. Is that that's the last of your hits? Correct. Correct. Okay, so I'm going to go to my hits now, starting off with the biggest, most notorious, not most noteworthy one. Uh, we put out a video in the offseason. We, we want to do a college video like, you know, what team do we think is an under the radar team that no one's talking about that needs to get the recognition that could go all the way? We started snooping around. Did you know who we settled on? We found the old Washington Huskies were getting zero attention. No one was talking about them. And we even had a couple fans screaming at us like, hey, you guys need to discuss this. You guys need to be looking at this. You guys are stupid and missing on this. So we said, you know what? You're right, fans. Let's look into this. And we noticed that there was a team that went 10-2 and two, that had multiple 1,000-yard receivers, had a quarterback that threw for over 4,000 yards, and a running back that put up, I think it was 800 yards last season, that was getting zero attention. No one was think- thinking they're going to win the Pac-12. No one was thinking they're going to make the national championship. So we said, you know what? We think that. We think this team is really, really good. We think that they're going to be really, really good this year. We think they can win the Pac-12. We think they can make it to the national championship game. And you know what? They have since have gone 14-0. and They have beat the Oregon Ducks twice. They have now beat Texas and Quinn Ewers. And they are now facing Harbaugh and Michigan in the national championship game. I don't think it gets any more right than that. And I'm going to give myself an honorable mention because we only did two under-the-radar college teams. And you know who the second one was? Florida State, Mr. 13-0, and won the ACC, exactly what we predicted. And we had a bunch of Clemson fans in our comments and Clemson fans on online telling us, you guys are wrong, Clemson's going to do this, Clemson's going to do that, Florida State sucks. And you know what? <laughs> Nailed that one too, 13-0 ACC championships. Champions. Man, man. And, and think about it. Florida State was one player away from getting to the college football playoff. Mm-hmm. So that's just – I mean – the Washington Husky hit is probably the hit that I'm most proud about too, because that's something that we've been kind of on um, the the forefront about, and I'm kind of patting our own backs right now because again, we've been talking about Washington since what, like July, June, even yeah. like around then, and people are like, oh no, no, they're not going to do anything. Then boom, now they might go win a damn natty. Um, that's mm-hmm. awesome, man. Um, one thing that we missed on. Um, Offensive rookie of the year, we said Bryce Young would bring home the hardware there. Um, to be fair, to be fair, we did not know the Panthers were going to be a dumpster fire this year. We're not, we're not 
we didn't think they'll be I, I can't, can't even say that because we kind of we kind of did. Um, we did not know they were going to just be awful. The defense pretty solid. The offense, nothing is going on there. Um, I think some some members of, of, of their staff that the, the head the head coach got fired. Uh, who else got mm-hmm. fired? I think the the, the Q, offensive coach, coordinator, yeah, everyone's QB gone. coach. It's a disaster everyone's, right everyone's now. Gone. Everyone's gone. Yeah. you know, CJ Stroud is right there for us. Assuming he does, he does win it, and we're like, no, we're go with Bryce. So that is so, a miss there. So I will, and and to explain our logic a little bit further on why we picked Bryce Young, we specifically said in that video that we felt it's a quarterback award. Usually, everything in the in the league is quarterback driven. Although I guess previously the last couple have been receivers to have won it, but you know we said it's going to go to a quarterback. Bryce Young's number one overall pick. It just seemed to make sense. We were one player off. We said Bryce Young. We said we were going to go to quarterback. It actually went to the number two overall quarterback in C.J. Stroud. So yeah. we, we did miss, but only by one pick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, to go on with another one of our hits, uh, we did call Miles Garrett being the defensive player of the year. Now, granted, he has not won the award. And specifically in the video, what we discussed was that the addition of Zadarius Smith – was the best rush partner he had ever played with in his career, and it was going to unlock his potential. And not only has it unlocked his potential, it has made that defensive unit one of the top units, not only in the NFL, but in NFL history. Uh, So there's a good chance he does win it. He's had a spectacular season. There is no clear favorite right now that I can see. I know some people have suggested Micah Parsons, which I don't know why he literally – Hasn't again nothing against Michael Parsons. He's a great player, but he hasn't done anything. I mean, besides, I guess quarterback pressures. Yeah, that haven't converted to sacks because he's still at thirteen, I think, for the year. So, I'm I'm still going to call that a win for us. We 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 predicted that it was, it was going to unlock that defense, and so far it has. It has so. that that defense is scary. Um, mm-hmm. it's crazy, crazy. Um, so this next miss is a twofer. Uh, it's about the same same team, I guess. Yeah, it is. Um, so first, we predicted that Daniel Jones could be a top ten quarterback, and then pair that up with you know the watch out for the Giants. They're, they'll be a sleeper team this year. Watch out for them; they could make some noise. Uh, both of those statements are false. So uh, the reason behind Daniel Jones maybe being top ten quarterback, we like the fact that he's dual threat. Second year in Brian Dable's offense. Last year, they made the playoffs. You know, he should surely take that leap forward. Got that big contract in the offseason. It was all set there, and it went disastrous. Uh, Same thing with the team, the Giants as a team overall. Again, they won a playoff game last season. First year under uh, Brian Dable. Thought they'll make that, that jump forward. And obviously, Daniel Jones got got hurt, and that sucks sucks for him. Hopefully, it's speedy re, re, re recovery there. Now looking to p- p- probably draft a quarterback. I think they're probably done with with Daniel Jones. They have an out going into twenty twenty five and his contract. So it looks like that story may be done there. Um, but yeah, not looking good for the Giants. I I will. I'm going to piggyback on for that for our hit because we did pivot very quickly away from that. I think it only took us four games to change our opinion about what the Giants were going to be and look like. And this was before Daniel Jones got hurt, where we released our video that it was time to move on from Daniel Jones. Um, we discussed his, like you mentioned, his contract. He has an out in 2025. What would make the most logical sense is for the Giants to draft a guy who might take a year to develop. You know, if we're looking at maybe a, you know, a, a Jordan, Jaden Daniels would be fantastic in that kind of spot uh, or Bo Nix. And then, Either cut Daniel Jones. Well, now with the injury, we discussed that he could sit as the backup until healthy, where the rookie's not going to get a lot of reps, and you can just learn from Daniel Jones before you release Daniel or trade him, whatever it is. Uh, but we did we did say that I think it was like the first week of October that you know it's it's time to get rid of Daniel Jones. The contract was clearly a mistake. Clearly, it was a one year fluke, and it's not something that should be held on to for much longer. That's true. So. Oh, was that, that, that your like hit? Or I have I have one yeah. more miss. Uh, okay, it is more it's more for me to clear my my conscience. I felt pretty pretty bad about the things that I said about this person. Um, Will Will Levis, I was not kind to him after the draft. <laughs> we did like again. 
we had a segment on players who we think will bust and who will not. And I was not, I was not kind to Mr. Mr. Levis. I kind of thought he'd be like a Johnny Man Menzel type of prospect. There's nothing there for me that I, I liked about him. Um, and of course, it's too early to say if he's a franchise guy for the for the uh, Titans, but he did look pretty good in the opportunities that he was he was given. Um, I do think um, I do I do think the team handled him pretty well this season. They didn't rush him to play, right? I think that they kind of let let him sit. I mean, he didn't start till what like week nine, I want to say, maybe even a yeah, later like than that. that. Maybe around there, the half halfway point. Um, and you know they didn't ask a whole lot out of him, but he he did pretty pretty well. So uh, to the man who likes mayo in his in his coffee, I give you praise. Uh, hopefully, you keep on keep on going, man. And I will add one more hit to that. Uh, I think we kind of mentioned it in our first ever video. I'm gonna fuck up my glasses here, goddamn! Right <laughs> before I take a victory lap, that's never good. Uh, that's karma coming to get me early. Uh, so. <laughs> We only, I only mentioned this quickly in the one first video that we did, and I kind of tweeted it, a couple things surrounding it uh, on hits. I severely disagreed with what the 49ers did in their draft in the third round. For those that aren't aware, they drafted Cameron Let- Latou out of Alabama tight end. Then, then or they started with Jake, taking Jake Moody and then took uh, Cameron Latou. And I was screaming at my TV screen that night that you need a right freaking tackle. Um, I can't remember the guy's name right now. Something Breland. He was out of BYU. Blake Breland out of BYU was taking three picks or four picks later after he has been a starter for, I believe it was the Colts pretty much all year. He's been solid for them. They've had, they've given Gardner Minshew a decent amount of time. Meanwhile, the 49ers offensive line has been ranked 22nd on the season with the right tackle Colt McKivitz being an absolute turnstile there for the 49ers and damn near getting Brock Purdy killed on several different occasions. So damn. I'm going to take a victory lap on that one and I'm going to pair it with this other victory fucking lap here. Oh, Cameron <laughs> Latou for the record. Cameron Latou for the record, who, if you guys aren't aware who that is, because he hasn't played a fucking snap of football all goddamn year. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he's been on the IR or the practice squad or where the fuck he's at. I've has not played a him. single fucking snap. <laughs> exactly. It's has crazy. not played a single fucking snap all year. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to double down on that as well. I was also screaming at every 49ers reporter this uh, past offseason, even before we had the podcast, and I was gently saying it to him after we had a podcast because I don't want to be mean, that they need a defensive end across from fucking Nick Bosa. And I kept being told, hey, Drake Jackson, it's his second year at a USC. He's worked on his body. He's yoked. Now, I said, I didn't see it last year. I'm not seeing it this year. You guys need a fucking defensive end across from me. You need somebody. And I kept getting told by fans, no, 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 we have Drake Jackson. No, 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 no. We just drafted a guy out of Georgia. We're good. I was like, that's not it. We need somebody. We need someone actual, like, special, someone, a starter. Right. Since they have traded for Chris Young, that defensive unit has, defensive unit has looked different. They've looked much better. They've looked like a top... 10 top five unit that we all kind of were expecting them to be because of the addition of a right defensive fucking end across, across from Nick Bosa. So just taking a victory lap on those two four and points that I've been screaming about all off season. And hopefully, hopefully to take my advice in consideration this off season and they get that right tackle fucking situation figured out because it is miserable. Yeah, no, dude, I think those, those takes are, are, I mean, you hit it right in like the head, man. I hope we don't run out of breath on your victory laps because I mean, those, those are like good ones too. Um, if only they like, this is my cardio. I know that it, it would probably wasn't going to happen because Washington won, want to see what they had in like a team, but I wish it could have been some deal in the off season with, with Chase, Chase Young to get, get them there sooner. Or I know he was going to yeah. come and come back from, from injury too. Um, at the beginning of like, the season, I think I don't think he was clear right away. I don't think he was playing right away. Yeah. You can correct me if I'm if I'm wrong. So maybe that went in the factor with it. But yeah, to your point, the 49ers defense got a whole lot better after Young was was added there. And then it's, it's old. I didn't realize the 49ers O line ranked 22nd, which is oh yeah, which is amazing considering how like fine tuned the offense is <laughs> like with a, with a yeah. mid, you know, mid tier O line and still putting up the numbers that they are. It's crazy. Well, and that's why it's kind of just, you know, we won't dive too deep into this right now. So just a quick overview. That's why that three game skid that the 49ers had 
the offense looked so bad was because Trent Williams was hurt. And he's, I mean, he's the whole engine. They're, they're running, they're run, going to run to the left because that's behind Trent Williams. Mm-hmm. The left guard, Aaron Banks, is, he's okay. He's solid. The center, Jake Brendel, Brendel has been okay. So if you're getting that grades, right, Trent Williams is an A+. Plus. Aaron Banks is about a B. Jake Brendel is about a C. The right guard, which initially was Spencer Burford, but then got benched for Joe Feliciano. It's about a C minus, maybe D plus. And then Colt McKivitz has been a fucking D minus, almost an F all season. Damn. I mean, there's times he's just watch where, you know, the, he's just getting walked, literally walked back into Brock Purdy's lap. And Brock Purdy's still delivering. It's part right. of the emphasis why why me, you, and a lot of other people have been screaming what Brock Purdy is doing is amazing because the, the O-line from about center onto the right is getting fucking dog walked every other play. Yeah, so. but, but he has he has Debo and BA and Kittle, so he's just like a system quarterback. You know, he's just he's plug plug and play. You know, nothing, not nothing special. <laughs> just to add on to that, just to add on to what you literally just said, which is so fucking funny as well about this. And I, I will end this rant here. I promise. After this, Brock Purdy threw to zero Pro Bowl receivers all season. That's wild. Debo and Brandon Ayuk did not make the Pro Bowl. For those that are saying he's just loaded with skilled position players over there, yeah, he did not throw a single touchdown to a Pro Bowl wide receiver all year. Yeah, George Kittle that's... made the Pro Bowl, and uh, Chris McCaffrey made the Pro Bowl. And I guess he's he's the only checkdown merchant that has the most air yards in like the league too. So I guess that kind of makes makes sense, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that that's no one not told... like par- paradoxical at all. <laughs> I know. Which we, we won't take a victory lap on that because we you can consider us wrong on the Purdy MVP video, even though one bad game shouldn't fucking determine that. But whatever. But we were right that Brock Purdy is a ten, top ten quarterback in the NFL. Yep. So last little mini victory lap on that. But with that, we will conclude. Uh, the season is coming down to an end, guys. So why don't you go to the comment section. If you've been with us all year, let us know what take of ours has been your favorite, which one you've disagreed the most with. Give us a like, a subscribe if you aren't already. And we love hearing from you guys as always. But until next time, it's been B, it's been Emmett. You guys can find us on Spotify, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. With that, y'all have a good night.